really pleased to be joined today by James Groves, Managing Director of Indigo Swan. Hello, James. Hello, Katie. How are you? Very well, thank you. Hope you are too. So um, we've got James here with us today because we've come across his TED talk recently, which talks about making mistakes. Now, this is something that often brings fear to the heart of many organisations. In fact, uh, making mistakes is usually a, a dirty word or a dirty phrase, should I say, but it means something very different to you. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about um, your fantastic mission statement, which is about an unflinching commitment to finding a better way? What does that mean? Um, Absolutely, Katie. Absolutely. Well, you know, for us, you know, find, finding a better way uh, is a way of encouraging our swans, so our team, uh, and encouraging the business to, you know, look at how how can we get ahead of our competition, ultimately. You know, we're a small business based in Norfolk, um, so how can we get ahead of our competition uh, and be more innovative and embrace that as a company as a whole? Um, but ultimately, look at the areas where, like you said about mistakes, it's a case of, for us, you know, let's have that no blame culture. Let's, if somebody does make a mistake, then let's have them put their hand up. Let's have a look at it and let's look at what we can do to innovate to make things better. And then it comes back to that, you know, unflinching commitment of finding a better way. There's no point, you know, going, oh, that's terrible. Why did you do that? Why did you do this? Because that's not going to do anything. That's going to just, that's just going to demotivate people and, uh, and probably mean they're going to make that mistake again and again and again. Whereas for us, you know, finding a better way is all about, you know, taking that mistake, having a look at it, reviewing it with the person that made it, uh, and ultimately coming up with a better way of doing things in the future um, and working alongside that person to do that. So that obviously they're invested in it and they're empowered by it. Um, and as a company, you know, we, we continue to look for that better way of doing things within the business. Brilliant. So we often speak to organisations where they may have... Um, we want our people to not be scared of making mistakes mm. um, no fear of making mistakes we get a lot of organizations that come to us and say you know this is what we really believe it's it's our values it's written on the walls it's in mm. our newsletters but it isn't seen and reflected across the organization people yeah. still are scared to try new things and do new things so how do we get it from being something that's written on the walls to actually being lived and breathed within an organization how does that change yeah uh, to, from my point of view two things so number one is consistent feedback so number one is continuous conversations with people about it you know making sure that you're actioning stuff if people have had ideas making sure they're getting feedback not just being a left um you know for me like i said you know sometimes you work for big corporates and you give an idea and they go yeah that's lovely and then you don't hear anything about it for six months for example you know, whereas for us, you know, that unflinching commitment to find a better way and, and the other value that we have, which is how we do anything is how we do everything. It is very much a case of making sure that we're having that continuous conversation with the team, making sure that if they've got an idea or they found a better way to do something, they get feedback on it. And, you know, that might be, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's work on that together. Do you want to go and work on that with a project team? Then then lovely. Please do. It might be a not now, but not a not never. Or it might be that's never going to happen. And just be honest about it and explain why that's not going to happen. But it's the consistent feedback, first and foremost, because then that way they are empowered. It is embedded. You know, uh, if you don't do that for one month, then you've lost it. So consistency is key with all of this as well. The second one is is for me and something that we I feel we do well as a business and, and, and myself and the other leaders is you've got you got to have that element of, you know, personal care for your team. You've got to understand those people as people. You know, you've got to find out a little bit about them. You've got to show an interest in them, what they like doing when they leave the four walls of the office or what they do when they leave their virtual office as it is now. You know, what does their life look like? Um, and if you can really pay some attention to that and really get to build those relationships from the ground up, then, you know, sitting down and having more frank conversations with people or sitting down with people to find a better way, then, they, you know, they do become easier conversations. You know, you work in collaboration. Um, and that's that's the key word for me is Indigo Swan is all, you know, it's all about collaboration. Yeah, we've, you know, I'm managing director, we've got a hierarchy, but ultimately it's very much about collaboration, you know, from 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 the bottom up um, and making sure that we're all working together to, to find that better way. Yeah, and I think it sounds as though a very supportive organisation as well. So 
you're giving people the permission to to try new things and and, and make mistakes if if you like and we'll talk yeah. a little bit about the language behind that yeah. in a moment as well but but also when things go wrong not leaving them to be like right it's gone wrong you sort it out to kind of right. talk with them support them let them know it's okay no one's yeah. died it's yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. fine absolutely. what can we learn from this and, and we can all learn from it as well you know sometimes they, they may be they may have taken a risk that you could have maybe taken yourself and made that same mistake yeah, so yeah, what, yeah. what can we all learn from that and I think that's it. You know, you've got the same for myself as well. It's, you know, I've made plenty of mistakes. You know, my TED talk talks about that. And, you know, it's being honest with the guys about that as well. You know, we have our signal process that I talk about in the in the TED talk, which is ultimately our no blame culture and, and dealing with the mistakes that have been made. But, you know, for me, I've had a signal in the past. Other members of the leadership team have had signals in the past. You know, we all make mistakes. It's just being honest about it you know and 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 just making sure that we share those with everyone don't hide them away don't scroll them away you know the most important and impactful thing that we can do as leaders is to make sure that we're open and honest about the mistakes that we make and make sure that that is shared with the company so that you know everyone every single swan regardless of what they do feels comfortable to be able to also put their hand up and say you know i made a signal i made a mistake and let's deal with it so the other thing i really want to um delve into a little bit is um, my background's in internal communications I'm fascinated mm. by communications and the psychology of words yep. and how it can make and change behaviors I do sometimes wonder if the use of the words fear of making mistakes can sometimes be a bit of a barrier to people actually embracing that because the yep. words that stick out there are, are fear and, and mistakes mm -hmm. um, obviously you have your own way of talking about yeah. this kind of thing within your organization do you think there's a need to kind of flip the way we talk about these things when when we are trying to change the culture and mindset of people 100 percent um and normally it comes from the day that we created this process otherwise it to be fair it wouldn't be called the signal process it would be just called the mistake process you know and, and for us we were very conscious that when we put this process into place um and we wanted to implement this no blame culture so, you know, we call it a no-blame culture, not a don't worry about making mistakes culture. Yeah. Very much a no-blame culture. We wanted something We wanted something that we could call it that was like people felt comfortable saying it. So, you know, the signals is only baby swans, signals, making mistakes, not lovely little pun. So, we got you know, we got signal process. But now it's a case that when people make a signal, which is ultimately a mistake, they're putting their hand up and saying, I made a signal. They're not saying I made a mistake. Mm. They're not saying I did something wrong. Yeah. They are simply saying, I made a signal. And, you know, we talk about signals all the time. We report on it uh, within our team meetings. We talk about the benefit that's come from them. We talk about the changes that we've made. And for me, it's like when we do a team meeting, it's not about talking about the mistake that necessarily happened or the signal that necessarily happened. It's about, well, what was the end result? What new process have we now put into place to make things better? We might talk about it without even talking about what the signal was in the first place. It might be like Andy, our head of operations, just goes, we've got a new process, guys. This is what it is. It's going to make us better. It's a better way of doing things. They, everyone doesn't necessarily need to know what the signal was. But ultimately, the positive that comes out of it is the changes that have been made. Yeah. Um, and I think, yeah, by calling it something other than a mistake and calling it a signal um, and continuously talking about finding a better way to do things yeah. um, and having a no-blame culture. Yeah, you are. I think the use of words is, is extremely important. Yeah. Because no one wants to put their hand up and say, I made a mistake. No. But now it's embedded, people are happy to say they've made a signal. Everyone knows mistakes should be limited, and they should. You know, you, you, it wouldn't be great if we were having 100 signals a month. But, you know, at the same time, people feel much more comfortable to say it. There's a process for logging it. Um, you know, they get to be involved in the changes to make their lives better and to make the process better. Um, so, yeah, I think language is, I think language is vitally important um and using more positive words and more positive language for things that most of the time are not necessarily perceived as being a positive is how do you turn it into a positive yeah. and ultimately that is what the signal process is all about is taking something that's not particularly positive in a mistake and turning it into a positive with a new process or a new way of doing things and, and a better way as i've said before sure thank you and I guess the last thing, just before we wrap up, obviously, um, you've been really lucky that as the organisation has grown, yeah. the people that you've brought in have always been living that way. And that's yeah. always been quite an integral part of your culture. What one bit of advice would you give to an organisation who may have been a bit more old fashioned and traditional in the past and, and actually 
never really thought about it this way who are maybe looking to change their culture yep. to embrace this way of thinking what's the one bit of advice you'd give them to kind of help them change two parts really one don't expect it to happen overnight that's, that's a gradual process yeah. there's lots of great little things that you can put into place and we have you know over 10 years we have got to a place where you know we are well respected for the culture that we have and we're well respected for the way we look after our people that didn't happen overnight you know some of the stuff started day one some of the stuff started two years ago some of the stuff started six months ago you know it's, it's a very gradual process so the first thing is don't expect it to happen overnight the second thing I would say, and the most important thing I would say, is involve your people, definitely. Don't go away as one member, of, as the managing director or one member of the senior management team or whatever. Go away and think you can embed a better employee engagement on your own, which because you can't. You know, it has to be a collective, collaborative approach, and you have to include the people in the team. Um, and you have to get their ideas, as I talked about earlier, uh, and feedback on those ideas. You know, I talked about we have a, something called a brain box, which is where the people submit the ideas, which is what I talked about earlier. Now, those ideas can be anything. Those ideas can be anything from like having a drinks cart on a Friday afternoon to the social that you're going to do to do a better process that you might have. So it can be numerous different things. But for me, it's all about collaboration. It's all about including everybody that's in the business. You know, some of the best ideas we've had at Indigo Swan have come from the most junior people and they've had the biggest impact. So don't, don't miss the talent that is on your doorstep, ultimately. You know, collaborate and work with everybody and work with the team um to come up with a way that they will feel more engaged brilliant thank you so much i really appreciate your time uh with us today okay. it's great and um there'll be a blog that will be coming out as well so hopefully by the time the video gets launched we'll be able to add the link to that in the chat if not keep an eye on Amazing. our web pages and make sure you check out james's ted talk as well again we'll make sure we put the link alongside the video Thank you very much. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate it.